Data Color Spider Pro. This is the Data Color Spider Pro No Space. I have a Data Color Spider X Elite, and I have the Data Color Spider X Pro. There's also the X2 and other ones. Don't get confused by it. This is the latest and greatest one from Data Color, the Spider Pro. And this one has a differentiating factor in that it can handle 1500 and 2000 nit brightness screen. So the higher the brightness screen, if you're working on very intense outdoor screens or even a MacBook 16 like mine can go up to these very, very high brightnesses. If you're calibrating something like that, you're gonna want the higher range calibration of the Data Color Spider. The cable and cord on this one uh, are let it hang over the back of a monitor, which is pretty cool. They've now upgraded to USB type C and there is an adapter for type A in here, which is good because that's what we need to use uh, to be able to display with this thing. And I am gonna use the adapter here that comes with it because on my laptop, I have one USB type C port on this Lenovo and that's in use right now. So the way that this unit works is it's a two piece kind of a clamshell design. It opens up and it slides down the cord. Well, why does it do that? It slides down the cord so you can have different size monitors. So you set this over the back of your monitor and this back piece adds enough weight and I tend to tilt them back a little bit. So it adds just enough weight so that this uh, meter doesn't fall down the monitor, which is pretty cool. So now you can see all of the options that are available when you have this. I can calibrate my display. Um, I can preview devices. Uh, is there an advanced button on this? Because I would love to be able to do some of the other stuff. The way that you do this is you set the monitor up the way that you want. You get your brightness settings, and I'm gonna double check those real fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the landing zone where it wants it. And now it's measuring the tone response. So this monitor, we're gonna see how the saturation is on it and see how it ranges. You know, uh, you have your Adobe, uh, you have your DCI, and you have your sRGB. Uh, does your display have different gamma settings? I'm gonna say no on this one because I don't wanna test the different gamma. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And now it's gonna test the different tone response and the gamma curves here. So that's why it's going from dark to bright. So it has calibrated grays and it's using this as basically a computer eye to tell if that gray that it's asking for on the monitor is represented as an actual gray. Now, another interesting thing you'll see on the Data Color Spider Pro is it has a little sensor on the outside of the unit here as well. So it's got this little tiny sensor right here and that's to test the room ambient light and to offset it. So that's actually something you can do here um, is you can test how well it does against the room light and you can actually have your monitor adjust with the room. So I'm gonna go in here, turn the brightness down to zero. My on-screen display is right in the middle. So I'm gonna turn the brightness basically down to one and now it's asking me to set the brightness to basically zero. It's gonna do something real quick. It's gonna flick back and forth at this brightness level and then it's gonna ask me to increase the brightness here which I'm gonna do, and it wants me to go to 25%. And what we're gonna find out, and I'll show the uh, final results here in just a second. Oh, you know what? It's not gonna have the uh, measurement properly because I had the OSD in the way. So ignore the uh, midpoint measurement that it's gonna get. My rule of thumb is if you can get a peak brightness above 300 on a laptop is pretty good. Uh, 350 or more in a you know regular display is really good. Over 500 for an indoor gaming computer, you're gonna be very, very happy with. Uh, if you're taking a laptop outside, over a thousand is even better. So you're gonna want something that's super bright. Now we're gonna go to the last brightness setting. So again, that middle one's gonna come up weird just because I didn't have the OSD hidden. Uh, but we're gonna bright, take the brightness all the way to 11 here, to 100%. And then I'm gonna get this out of the way. We'll do that. And with that information, we should be able to get a report here very soon about how it's working. I'm gonna set the brightness back to 50%. A average of two for a Delta E, that's the difference in what color you were asking for versus what you got. An average of two is excellent. Um, if you're up to a four, that's something that you're generally gonna be able to see that the monitor is off. If you're really good, you can see it off at two. Um, and if you're beyond four, you probably need a major calibration. The thing I say about saturation is you can add and calibrate color to a monitor, so you can change color, but you can't add color. So you can't add saturation. So if it doesn't have a good 
saturation level, you're not going to be able to fix that. So we're going to go ahead, you're going to see lots of different colors here, technically 48 of them here. It's going to take a few seconds, but at the end of this, we're going to know how accurate this monitor is and how much saturation capability it has. So we're looking at here is the P3 color space. They've added a few additional, the Rec 2020, uh, NTSC, as well as another option in here, but it's in the representation of this triangle. So if you think about it, just regular sRGB, which is what most games are, is this small triangle. The red triangle is what this monitor is coming out at. So it's doing a full 100% of sRGB. It's doing 83% of the purple, which is the Adobe RGB. That's gonna be for your proof work, your photo work. Uh, so it's doing a fantastic job of that. And the DCI P3 is, is it's labeled P3 here. Um, that's another format and it's got almost 92% of that. So from view edge, this one is doing really well. Gamma curve here, so gamma 2.2 would be that real light blue line. And it's right next to the gamma 2.2. Gamma 1.8 would be this. So gamma is the brightness, almost the uh, contrast ratio, if you would, of the monitor. So monitors that are very bright and don't have good blacks and throughout the range are very um, uneven would be more towards like a gamma 1.8. And you set these if you're doing proof work. Um, so gamma 2.2 is what this is coming out closer to. Brightness and contrast, again, throw out that number at 25%, but it's getting 388. Now I told you anything over 350 is decent for a monitor. This coming at 388 and the contrast ratio for an IPS is actually doing really well. This is one of the better testing IPS panels that we've seen. Uh, we don't have any OSD settings. We didn't do screen uniformity. Let's take color accuracy and wow. <laughs> this is very, very good. Um, I don't know if this is just my new tester. This is non-calibrated, so we're not running a calibration profile on this. This monitor is coming in with an average below one. Um, what's interesting about this is monitors that are calibrated at the factory, one of my favorites is the Asus ProArt. A below two Delta E is what they guarantee on their monitors and they give you a calibration report. Uh, but this one almost wouldn't need any calibration out of the factories. Overall monitor rating, color accuracy, it gave it a 4.5. So maybe the Spider uh, Pro is a little bit more lenient on the colors, but wow, is that doing really good. So tone response, it's a little bit dark on the tones. Uh, gamut, great. White point, great. Contrast, great. So it's got a pretty good result overall on this one. Um, so that was the Data Color uh, Spider Pro. Now it has calibration capability, so I will be able to, in just minutes, calibrate this monitor, but honestly, it doesn't really need it. But you wouldn't know that unless you had a tool like this to be able to calibrate with initially.